Today, we're gonna to echo the thoughts in yesterday's video around individuals, content creators, businesses, letting down their customers by not being held to a level of accountability or responsibility that you would expect from them. You've all seen this video by now, but for those that haven't, I'm gonna quickly play you this break right now. You already know we are the retail kings on this side. Jesus Christ. No way. Let's get it. Let's get it. No, you cannot see the DT. Nobody's going to see that DT. And as you can see in the video, the guy pretty blatantly gets caught trying to steal our downtown card. Now, this was the Retail King. They're a group breaker. They've since been banned by Whatnot, or at least according to Whatnot, they've been banned. Um, their own has come out and done an apology video, and he's basically blamed it on the new kid coming on. Basically said, we wanted to try and start breaking for more hours and Whatnot. We've hired this guy to break overnight. He's let us down, so we've let him go, right? They don't, they've, they've basically fired him. And there's a few things I want to talk to on this situation. I don't like the fact that they've sort of blamed it on this kid because yes, this kid did steal something and there is some, you know, information out there that might indicate somebody else, one other employee was actually there at the same time and was handed the downtown card. I don't want to talk to that, but this guy trying to wipe his hands clean of the situation was very disappointing to see because he can't then blame the kid for doing what he did because he, as a business owner, needed to do more for his customers to make sure that Somebody like that wasn't hired in the first place. You can't blame it on the new kid when you, your own self, failed the vetting process, right? You have an obligation. You have a responsibility. We talked about this yesterday when it came to content creators painting pictures, painting false narratives to their customer base that make things look like they're better than what they are and how that wasn't good enough and they need to be held accountable for that and they need to be aware that they have a responsibility to the viewer. Business owners like this get away with this a lot within the hobby and Breaking in general gets away with a lot of this sort of hanky-panky happening quite often. It's not good enough. You need to be better as a business owner. You can't let things like this slide. You can't blame the new kid. You yourself as a business have done something terribly wrong. And there are so many businesses out there in the hobby as a general, not just in the breaking space, that are letting you all down. They're not giving you a sufficient service as a customer. Their accountability sucks. Their responsibility sucks. Whatnot have since come out and said they've banned these guys. I'm not sure how true that is. If they have, I think it's a good thing. It's poor form for this guy in the sense that he's sort of been let down now by this one mistake. But again, you need to be better if you want to be operating in this space. We need to apply a level of standard that we're not currently getting. There are so many ways out for individuals busting product and breaks on Whatnot. Whatnot protects them far too often. Whatnot will reach the refund the customers. You see things like this happen all the time. This video was shared to me um, by a few different people. But the main person uh, was Denny Cards, and apologies in my mind initially. There's a few other people that have talked about this as well, but Denny Cards also, as I'll quickly show you now, there was three other breaks that occurred in the last 24 to 48 hours or the last week that all had very similar issues. This thing is so pervasive out on whatnot. And in my video that I'll put on screen now where I talked about breaking, needing some form of a regulation, this was off the back of a TikTok news, and if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, TikTok looked like they were going to burn, or ban, I should say not burn, um, breaking from their platform and how we were anticipating something similar would come from whatnot. So in that video, I talked about how we needed some form of regulation to try and standardize the breaking industry to make things better for us as customers. Because right now you've got people like this running wild in the wild, wild west, as I like to put it, ruining it for everyone. And I've had so much pushback from that. And it's not just that video that I put out two weeks ago. It's videos that I've put out, I'll put some on screen now, you know, over the last year and a half, two years, that consistently gets pushback from me being a hater. Calling this stuff out and trying to hold these businesses accountable is not hating. You know, fanatics could come in here and fix things, and we don't want fanatics to sort of have a monopoly on the industry in the sense that they're going to make it so difficult for anybody to enter the breaking industry. I really hope they're going to allow their platform to allow as many people to come on board as possible and break cards. The only thing I hope they do, which I think fixes a lot of these issues that you're seeing with breakers like those Retail King guys, is standardize what you expect. If you want to be a breaker, you need to have a certain level of service offering to your customers. What does that mean? It means maybe you need to run and operate out of a website as opposed to Facebook groups. 
you need to have two or three cameras. You need to have a camera showing the cars. You need to have a camera showing the whole room. You need to have a camera showing your face. Those three things should be the bare minimum. You might need to also have, you know, an appropriate re uh, refund policy, a few other things. You might also have to use, you know, a certain level of, um, what's what I'm looking for, the randomizing uh, tools that they use, right? They all, all use random.org. Some of these guys use duck races. There's some breakers in one of the videos that Denny Card shared where they use balls in a bucket and they took the balls in the bucket off camera and the guy pulls the ball out and this breaker happened to buy into his own spot and he got the top pick, right? That stuff is it's just so dodgy and it's not good enough. And the second you see that, that's a red flag. I talk about these red flags all the time. But those are kind of the kinds of things that Fanatics could eradicate if they truly wanted to. If they come in with their platform and they don't do those things and they pick and choose who they want to be on that platform, that is not good enough because you're going to see things like this still persist. We've had three or four breakers, like I just said, in the space of a week, get flagged for this. How many are happening on whatnot streams where nobody's really watching and the people that are complaining about being scammed or ripped off don't have a voice to call it out? How many times has that been happening? I think given that we've seen this happen, you know, so front of mind, you're again, like I said yesterday, a little naive to think it's not happening to a higher scale. I just think this stuff is, you know, completely unacceptable. It's very disappointing to see. And I don't think we're going to see any change. What has been positive with this whole situation is that people are starting to call it out a lot more frequently. Like you can see over here, Denny's Cards posts, you've got responses from Talon, you've got responses from Shirewave Vlogs, even on the Retail Kings posts. If we go there now, you've got so many people, Sports Card Nonsense posted Shirewave Vlogs, Hit'em High Sports, Suns Fan 8, so many people that, you know, have pretty big followings are calling this stuff out now. You've even got Daps, surprisingly enough, calling it out on him and him trying to capitalize it for his own store by offering a free box to say thank you to the person who called this out. Again, Daps is playing games there, I think, but it is just an interesting situation. You've, you're getting so many more people call this out now, which is really, really good, yet you've had people like me, and I don't want to say I told you so, I'm not saying it for this reason, that have been calling it out you know, for two years, Sports Card Radio, AIH Sports, I'm not sure who breaks, there's a few others that also caught it out, yet we got pushback when we did, and we were told we were sort of hating on the industry, and the pushback we were getting from people within the hobby that had prominent followings made things even worse, because they made it look like we were talking nonsense. Yet now you've got them calling up these things. It's like our hobby has been held back for the last two years because the people that tend to have a voice in our hobby don't always have the best intentions in mind or they don't always have uh, the knowledge or the expertise to be saying why something is good or why something is bad, right? Now we're saying that people like myself have called these things out. I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I'm coming from an external audit perspective. I do that for a living. My whole job is around business processes and things that businesses should or shouldn't do if they want to be successful. I look at this at the biggest scale, at the largest banks and institutions in the world. So I see how these things operate. I see what works and what doesn't work. And when I'm seeing these mistakes from these breakers, it's pretty clear to me that it doesn't work. And it's been disappointing to see when I've caught it out in the past, that pushback has come. And it's held our hobby, in my opinion, back from being in a more advanced position than where it is right now. Right? We could be so far past these issues with group breaking if WhatNot had enough pressure put on them. WhatNot should not be allowing this stuff to happen. WhatNot, if they want to be competitive, they, you know, sure as heck better get things in line before Fanatics comes on board. Because if Fanatics want to mandate that if you want to buy a product from them directly, you have to break on their platform and you can't break with WhatNot, then WhatNot between now and then better be doing everything they can to make sure that their, you know, process is a lot more robust and, you know, established than it currently is. You need breakers with a certain level of respect, a certain level of responsibility to you as a customer, and you're not currently getting that. So apologies for the rant today. Um, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I just thought this was a pretty interesting one to talk to. Uh, I'm very disappointed, you know, seeing this stuff happening because it shouldn't be happening. Breaking is such a simple industry to get right, right? And these bad guys are ruining it for all the good guys out there that are doing such a good job. I love breaking. I buy into some every now and then. I think they're a lot of fun. And the fact you've got these people out there ruining it for you is completely unacceptable. I'm very concerned about the number of people out there that have been scammed and not had a voice or an opportunity to call this stuff out. So please, if you know somebody that's been scammed by a breaker or you know of a breaker that is doing dodgy things, please reach out to me. I'll call it out and hold these guys accountable because this is not good enough. We need to be better as a hobby. And until things like this start being called out more often, we're going to see more of the same. And that's very, very disappointing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.